Hi, I'm Julie Torrens. I've got here a Magnolia magazine, and the reason why I got this, it was given to me by my daughter-in-law. But if you can see, can you see how matte this cover is? And the pages are also quite matte. So besides being able to just harvest regular magazine stuff, I can use this to make ephemera. And I know that there have been some people that have been asking me, how do I make those little embellishments that I add to my tags and things? And this is how I make them. So this is from a prior project, but it's still good paint. At least some of these colors are. So I'm going to start out by just taking this magazine sheet. Now I had this side. This is too big for my taste. I like this side better because it has some text, some pictures, but I just, rather than those big bold letters for, for this, you know, here we go. Got myself a wider brush. It is wet. I always wet my brushes first. And I'm just going to go ahead and I've got some white on here too that I'm just going to kind of mix them together, but I just want to use up this paint. So this is a good way to use up leftover paint. I'm kind of running out of room here, but that's okay. So I'm just going to start by, I just put stripes in. And you don't want your paint too watery. Don't put a lot of water in it because that's going to make your paint not want to stick to this magazine, even though it's matte. So I don't have a lot of I had my my brush was kind of drippy as I had it off and I've got a piece of just wax paper underneath it so that I'm not getting paint all over my table okay there's one color not even going to change or clean out my brush okay this I can see is dry I don't want orange but I'm gonna go ahead I've got that green out here so I'm ooh, I think I just flung some paint. I hope not. Oh, I hope not. Oh, well. Nothing I can do about it now. Let's just get some of this green. I've already shook this. Like I said, I just got done using these. But I'm going to go ahead and add some of this green. And as I say, I don't care that there's blue on here and blue next door that's wet. And I'm just going to add this right on top. And these are just some... These two are Ranger Dauber paints that I got from a, it's a local place and it's a craft warehouse where they get a lot of cast offs. I think they buy things in bulk that, you know, discontinued colors, discontinued packaging, whatever, but you can get some really good bargains in there. I've got two jars of uh, washing to wash my brushes and look these are big old pickle jars and I have them three quarters full if you're going to do acrylics you need water and I've even been bold enough and it's terrible but <laughs> I, I even mentioned it one time in the comments to someone who I was watching and I said you need more um water for rinsing your brushes and I I she said something about how you know her children are nearby and she just is used to not pouring much water and you know that's fine but you know what I mean it just if your brushes aren't clean and she was having issues that her brushes weren't clean it just it'll just frustrate you so I've washed this out and I uh gave it a dry off now this is very transparent which I knew it would be that's okay I'm going to use a combination. Some of these colors are going to definitely be more opaque, meaning it's going to cover what's under better than others. But I use a variety. And when you're using a pearlized paint like this green happens to be, it uh, it shines so much that it helps to kind of tone down what's under there. I'm going to rinse this off. I'm going to add another color. But this is, I just, you know, on I'm just going right now with the colors that I happen to have on my desk. I'm going to go ahead and grab this pink. This is called Wild Orchid. Again, this is that Ranger Dauber paints. I don't know if they still make these Dauber paints. Um, 
maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe it's the colors that were let go. I mean, it, it's any number of reasons how paints end up at a place like this that I bought them from. It could be that in one of the cartons, uh, one or two paints opened, and so the packaging was spoiled. Now, I didn't see that. I have seen products in there that are current products. Things like the uh, black archival... I'm just adding some more pink. Uh, archival ink that is permanent. Big old pads of it. But many of the pads that were in that collection, which they were more than half off of the retail, better price than even I could get with going to someplace with a coupon... They uh, they had those out there, and you know, I don't care about the packaging. Isn't you know maybe that's terrible, but yeah, if I can get those expensive inks for half price or less, oh yeah, I'm going for it. All right, last color, and I am going to this one's called Fruit Punch. It's a Martha Stewart. I I believe this line is still out, and it was a um. It, it was a set that I got, and I got it years ago, but I think, I know her paints were, last time I was at a big box craft store, her paints were still out there. I know she still, I, well, I believe she still makes craft supplies, but I just wanted the set because it was all pearls and metallics, so there you have it. Okay, so now this, when I get to this phase, this needs to dry. So I'm going to go and I'm going to set this aside. But I've got one, two, three, four of them already dry. And I'm going to go grab those. So just hang in there. Don't take off without me. I'll be right back. They're close at hand. And here they are. So you can see... I've used a variety of colors. I've used a variety of paints. So this one, I've got a pearlized green, a pearl that this is that um, that fruit punch one. A couple of those. This one I kept all in the reds kind of families, and this one I kept all in the greens. Thinking about making um, leaves and other types of greenery, and then another one that's the pinks and orange and all that. We can start with this one. These have all been drying for literally hours. Now, I realize this one's kind of folded up, and I can usually kind of straighten it up. There, I think you'll be able to see that okay. I'm gonna start out by still using what's left over on here, Let's get this brush rinsed and out of the water. I don't picture us using a big old brush like that anymore, so we'll just set it aside. And I'm going to grab this little square brush, and I am going to start. I know we're crowded, but just, you know, bunch up. We'll be okay. I'm just going to start making marks. So... This brush is dry. I'm going to just dip it in the water. When you dip your brushes in the water first, then the paint isn't so apt to just sink deep into the bristles where you'll never get it. And the paint is more available to you. And I'm just going to start out by making some lines. It's like this. Nothing complicated. Nothing particularly skill heavy. I think everyone has the skill set to be able to make some little dashes. And I'm just making marks to make interest, to make things look, you know, different. Now I think I'll switch it up and go this way. Same color. And I'm as much making marks so that I can make some of the ephemera as I am using up paint. And I rescued a magazine from the recycle bin because that's exactly where my daughter-in-law puts them when she's done. And I don't blame her. I am not one that can collect a lot of this kind of stuff because I am limited in space. 
so I just get what I can use. I normally get my magazines from Friends of the Library. They're a dime, but if they hang around in that Friends of the Library room for too long, they end up in the um, in the recycle bin. So, and I am not looking to create an overall pattern because this is all going to be drawn on top of and cut out. So maybe you'll see, maybe you won't. But I'm changing it up a little bit because it can be interesting to have two different designs in one area so that as you're making flowers or circles or whatever you're making for ephemera, you can get more than one pattern on the in the same piece. There, look at how fast that went. Wasn't that good? All right, let's rinse it out. I may not end up using all the paint that's on here on my uh, plate, but I'm going to use a good portion of it. All right, this brush is not rinsing. There we go. Okay. I've got some pink left over, so I think I'm going to start by putting some of the pink over here on the orange. I don't have a lot, but I believe I can use up what I have. And I'm going to make some circles-ish. May not get too many. It doesn't matter. And you say, well, those aren't very round. Doesn't It doesn't matter. Because, again, we're going to have so much stuff on top that I'm just adding visual texture and hopefully some interest. I have my Posca pens that I'm going to be working with as well. So if I want a little more finer detail, I can do that. But between what you can see through from the magazine and then this leftover painting that I'm doing, you'd be surprised at just how fun. Well, I think it looks fun. And it looks fun for enough people to ask me how I do it, which I do have another video showing this, but it, it goes back a ways. So I was asked about how do you do this? And I thought, well, I need this ephemera. So might as well turn the camera on. Now this is a lighter orange and I'm just going to keep the dots going. It's the same orange, I believe that's under here. It's just that um, I added some white to it. So it's kind of a tone on tone look, but that's fine. And I'm making these more closer together than the other ones, and that's fine. But I'm happy to use up the paint on my palette. It's just one of the ways I use it. Uh, some people have a journal. I used to, but I don't now. I've considered starting one, but I just haven't done it yet. Um, where it's a leftover paint journal, where you just rub off your leftover acrylics into the paper that you have in that journal and then those become your backgrounds and I, I you know it's fun it's a real fun way to do it I just don't have that right now I do not waste buckets of paint I can't afford to but uh I don't again uh space I don't make a lot of ephemera ahead because I don't have the storage so I'm making it more often than maybe other people make it. And I'm, I'm sure I am because I've seen people with literally shoebox full of just one type of, of uh, um, embellishment or, or ephemera. And, uh, and it's great if you've got the space. I used to, but not now. And that's okay. When people tell me they just don't have the room to do crafts, I live in a one-bedroom apartment. And I've made room to do crafts in a big way to make art in a in a very good way, I think. So, okay, I've got some green on here, another green. It's kind of an emerald green. And I really don't know if it is, I've still got paint in this. There we go. Uh, I really don't know if it's going to be workable. Yeah, no, it's dry. Okay, so... This is done for the used paints, but I'm still going to use it for some of the other paints. Now, I've got some metallic gold. 
And this is a, the, this was from that kit, Martha Stewart, and it had two gold colors. This one is just called gold. I think the other one might be called antique gold. It's definitely a different color, but uh, I like them both. Oh boy. Took something off of that lid, and of course it's all over my hands. That's why my nails, if you're looking at my nails thinking, girl, I know, but when I do acrylic painting, it is hard on my nails. So I just decided to, this brush was already wet. I just decided that I'm going to do some acrylic and then I'll do my nails. Okay, I'm going to make some more marks and I think I'm just going to make some X's. Now the gold is more transparent, but the gold does show up more once it's dry. And I think I'm going to take this right over all the way to this pink. Can you see like this? All the way across. And sometimes I do a lot of the same design like I did these first two rows, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll just do that much and then maybe and I'm going to keep the same color and maybe I'm going to just do dots like this. And whoop, there we go. Sticking my arm in the paint. <laughs> That's why I wear the clothes that I wear. That's why I didn't do my nails. I don't consider myself a real messy crafter, but I do do things a little more in a hurry when I'm doing them for a video because I, you know, I, I want you to be able to see the whole process. I think we've got enough videos out there and I enjoy them as much as you probably do where it's all sped up or it is done very, very quickly. And you can watch it two or three times. I just sometimes, I just cannot get what what's going on. And I think sometimes a slower video can be nice as well. So I'm just putting these little dots in. Some are bigger, some are smaller. It's all fine. So have you started making some of your own ephemera? Maybe you um, like to use digitals and they already come with a good amount of ephemera that you fussy cut. Nothing wrong with that. I don't own a printer. And even if I did, I don't know how much. I, I'm not saying I would or I wouldn't. I don't know. I like what I do. I like the look I achieve. And so I don't know. I'm always up for something new. I can get as bored as anybody else can. You might be saying, yeah, we're bored of you. <laughs> That's why it's a good thing we've got a variety on YouTube, isn't it? Because that can certainly happen. No fault of the artist, no fault of the person who's watching. So I mentioned it in another video, but I'm gonna mention it here. Um, this is uh, November 1st, 2022, and I did get the community tab. Yay! So I did put out a little feeler that if you see it, please comment on it that I can know that it's, it's functioning like it's supposed to function, but it's going to be a really nice way that we can communicate with each other and you don't even have to leave YouTube to do it. And you can add your responses or your replies. And I just think it's a, I think it's just a great way, a really great way to communicate. All right, I'm gonna take some of this gold that I've got going and I'm gonna, not on all of the dots, but on some of the dots, I'm just gonna add a bloop of gold, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing in the orange. Not all of them, but some. Just to add a little sparkle. It's 
So have you hit your stride when it comes to autumn? I would say that our one more row. I would say that our autumn leaves are done. I would say 80% of the trees in my neighborhood and in my son's neighborhood it are um everything's off. They're bare. And there's still some. There's always a, you know different varieties that are later than others, but for the most part it's it looks done to me. Okay. We got this much left. What does that what do I think I want to put on there? Hmm. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Well, I've got some of this light green. And maybe I'll just add, I'm putting it in the spot on my plate that was already dry of the same color. And I think I'm going to add, this is a green pearl. What's it called? This one's called mint chip. And I'm just going to add a little of that to this. And then it will won't maybe be as pearly. Um... You know, again, it's just a little variety, a little, little something different. And let's add some more. Let's add some more marks. I think I'm going to add some little marks this way and then go this way. And then this way. And again, this way. And you can see, sometimes I'm picking up more of the pearl. Sometimes I'm picking up more of the green. Good. What am I doing? Let's make these lines like that. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to kind of change it up this way. And where you're not seeing the paint show as much, when that pearlized dries, it will show. making some marks making some patterns do what's easy for you I do have a video that has about doodling and you can doodle with acrylic paints you can doodle with markers you can doodle with whatever you want now I am going to be using markers on these I'm going to be using acrylic markers and alcohol-based markers but this has had a really good long time in hours this has been drying so We'll be okay. Now, this exact one, will I be able to use markers on it today? Maybe not. Maybe later today, but not during this video. I, I don't picture it. Because I'm putting acrylic on top of acrylic, that takes longer to dry. You know, that's just the nature of it. A little bit more. I like the green on top of the pinks. And even though some of this is going to be flowers, not all of it. And this isn't the only type of ephemera I make. This is just one type, but I do use it. And we're going to be fussy cutting out some things and we're going to be using punches. And I can even show you when I set this aside, some of them that I've made. One more row. Let's go for it. Yep. And here we go. Now I think I'm going to just keep this green going. I am going to bring this out a little bit closer to that edge. And I'm just going to keep using this same. And I think I'll make some squares.
and I realize this is translucent or even almost transparent, but it will change when it dries. And like I said, I, I want all this texture. So if you start and you think, oh, I can see right through it. That's okay. I, I can see text all through here. I love it. So you've got the pink paint on top of the text. There's two layers. Then we're putting this. This is a third layer. And then we're going to do markers and things. That's the fourth layer. So you can just imagine the visual interest in, te and, um, in textures and in shapes and all that. Now, maybe if this is just something that you don't think you'd want to do, I could not take text or pictures or anything from a magazine, do this on top, and then scan it to create digitals because I would be going against copyright. I am not reproducing this and... I think that I'm altering it enough that I don't think if I sold like maybe items that have this ephemera on it, I think I'm, I'm okay. I mean, I really feel like I would be because I don't think that a person would be able to plagiarize from it or, you know, I don't, I don't think it would be even be recognizable to where the source was, but as far as making mass quantities of copies through digital, no. I think then you're pushing the envelope. Making envelopes out of this is a cool thing, though. Just saying. <laughs> Especially lining an envelope or lining. If you're doing uh, making journals and you're making journal pockets, you know, where you punch out that thumb hole to have some of this paper peeking through. Really cool. Really cool. I'm going right off the edge here. And I've got more space here. So I'm going to just go ahead and have some going right off of the page here. Huh. I'm working way over here and I'm not even thinking about, can you see? I think you can. All right. In case you couldn't see, here we go. There's this beginning of this sheet. So it's a piece of magazine paper. It's got, this one has four stripes of acrylic paint. And then I used acrylic paints on top to add some texture. So that's what's going on with this one. I'm just going to set it aside to dry. And I'm grabbing the next one in the row. Okay, so I think on this one, I'm going to use a combination of Pasca and um, acrylic. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just start with some up here. So I'm going to bring it down, and I realize you don't see the bottom, but I'm just going to do some acrylic up here. And then maybe we'll do some Pasca at the bottom. All right, so I'm going to keep using that same green combo that I was using. And I'm going to start, might as well just start at the top, right? And I'm going to start with some circles again. I think circles are relaxing to look at. I think they're relaxing to, to draw or paint. I think as a background, they go with so much. If you make a circle with a circle, it looks cool. If you make a, a square filled with circles, it looks cool. So I use a lot of dots and circles in, in different ways in my art. And I like it all. I, I have to like what I'm doing, you know, I, otherwise it, it, 
it quits being my art and my joy and it becomes my work. And I'm not saying that art isn't work. It is time. But when it's something that you also just love to do, it takes on a whole new place in your life, doesn't it? I mean, when I do my job and I, I still work, I'm a nurse. When I'm nursing, doing my nursing job, that's not relaxing. Now, it's not drudgery. I enjoy being a nurse, but it's work. Like right now, am I getting paid for art? Not really. But that's why I'm working my other job and I'm just starting to build this business with the idea that eventually I will be able to generate an income and it'll be multifaceted. It won't just be YouTube. Maybe I'll make classes and tutorials that you buy. I don't picture that anytime soon. Maybe it will be selling finished products that I see happening sooner than, than having classes. To, frankly, I like doing this, this, the way we do it for, for free. Um, I, I don't know that I would necessarily open up, um, membership. Never say never. You know, we'll just have to see how it all goes. There are people that have memberships and they've been YouTubers for years. And I'm talking like nine years have been doing similar, I would say the same vein, you know, d doing art type tutorials and things. Um, I said I'd only go halfway. All right. Well, let's, I'm going to, I've still got a little more of this paint. So I'm going to go this way. Uh, and then just now they've decided to have some, to open up a membership and there's going to be some videos that will be exclusive to the members as their, as their thank you for becoming um, members that there's going to be some content for members only. They've lost bunches of subscribers instantly. And they're, you know, now they're, explaining and, and I don't have any one particular in mind because I've seen it happen to several where they're saying, Hey, look, I am still putting out the same amount of content for free that I always have. This is going to be above and beyond that will be for members. But see, some people have things like Patreon and that doesn't seem to offend people as much. I don't know if it's because that portion is on a separate platform. You have to open up a, an account with, with Patreon. And okay, I think I've got enough of these. But, pardon me. I knew that was coming. You have to have a separate account with Patreon. You have to leave YouTube to go over to Patreon. And then there's exclusive things over there. And sometimes there's other things like... Uh, other incentives. Sometimes if at a certain level, they'll, you'll get something in the mail every month, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. But I guess just my whole point was right now, I'm not making money at this and that is totally fine with me. Because it's to be my joy. This is my this is my relaxation. And this is my, my time that I get to visit with you. And that means a lot to me. A whole lot. Because I'm talking with people of, of like interest. All of you so far, as, I, as far as I know, are art or craft oriented. Some of you have your own YouTube channels and I watch people faithfully that have channels like this that I enjoy. 
listening to their chat and finding out what's going on in their art, what's going on in their lives. How do they blend their life with their art? Some work, some don't, some are retired, some this is their work. They are pro totally professional. There's one lady that I watch, Sandy Hester. Um, I think her channel is called The Life of an of a Artist's Artist Life, something like that. But I believe that her YouTube channel is just her name, Sandy Hester. Well, anyway, I know that she sells her paintings for, you know, $2,500. She sells prints for hundreds of dollars. But she's been an established artist for a very long time. So she has built her little business up and it isn't so little anymore. And, you know, we're all different. Different degrees of what we do. Different levels of education. Different backgrounds. I like it all. One guy that I watch, his name is Carrie the Crafter. It's Carrie Griffiths is his, I know I've mentioned him before, is his site. He was um, and is, uh, a, I think he's called a pastry chef, but he has done professional in a big way, like international cake decorating star. Well, that certainly is an art form in, in all kinds of different ways. And since COVID, from what I'm gathering from just, I mean, I'm not friends with him, but just from listening to his chat as he does his work, he, uh, that business model changed for him a lot during lockdown time. So I think, I'm assuming it sounds like we're seeing more art because he's got just a different business model now since COVID. And, you know, so that's why I'm saying we, we all have different backgrounds and different reasons why we do what we do. Okay, so I did do half of that page. These paints I'm going to call done. If I want the palette it's right there and I think I'm going to start working on the rest of this page with my Posca markers um, again this is dry enough that you could use your alcohol based markers whatever you want I just blindly grabbed a color and it turns out to be brown that is fine with me and I'm going to start making and this goes faster I'm going to start making some doodles on here that's going to turn into ephemera. Just making lines and circles and maybe some crosses. I'm, I'm veering off of this edge, so I'm just going to add a little more to this far edge. There we go. I like the combination of brown and pink. I like the combination of brown and this kind of a turquoisey teal sort of a color. Always have. I think it's a, a nice look. And if you're saying, well, your lines aren't very straight, it doesn't matter. I promise you, it doesn't matter. I think I'm just going to turn this and give it just another row of those circles there. Okay, grabbing another pen. This time I grabbed an orange, so it seems like I've kind of picking up some fall colors again. That's okay. making squares and maybe I'll make some triangles and 
And maybe I'll make, what else? Maybe wavy lines. Okay, that looks good. Grabbing a pink. That one I grabbed on purpose. And let's see. Maybe, hmm, how about some swirls? Another row. I like the Pasca on top of the uh, shimmery paints. I think that looks cool. I think it, it makes the sparkle shine through. One more row. And sometimes the further I go along, things start to get a little smaller, things start to get a little bigger, things start to kind of lean towards the left or the right. It's all good. Just get some marks on the paper. And maybe I'm just going to add some empty circles about the size of those swirlies and just change it up just that much. And I've got these like in a row compared to having them alternate like polka dots. Both are good. That's just the way this one came out. And the Posca's dry really well on top of the shimmery paint as, as, as well as they do on top of the more matte finish paints. All right, I'm grabbing yellow. And that just was literally the next one in line. I don't know why. I, I just wanted to grab the pink. I was just in the mood for that for some reason or another. Okay, how about teardrops? Yep. Some of them look more like ovals. Some of them look more like triangles. It doesn't matter. It's all good. Okay, what else? Well, hmm. There. That looks good. Okay, I'm grabbing a green. And I think I'm going to make dots. Just like this. Now I realize that is almost akin to watching paint dry. So I won't do it for too long. But for a little bit. Because when you cut a shape out of this it looks really cool kind of like an interference type of a thing little more. You can you can stand it a little bit more, can't you? A few more dots. Okay. That was fun.
How about some purple? And maybe I'll start out by putting a smaller circle inside these ones that don't have a swirl. Poscas tend to dry pretty quick, but you still have to be mindful because if you drag your arm right through it, yeah, it'll move. How do I know? <laughs> you can only but imagine. Okay, I think I'm going to start with some lines like this. Kind of a textury line. different line variations. Yep, that's, that's looking good to me. I just have this little corner left. What am I gonna do in this little corner? I'm gonna grab this gray. And what can I do in the gray? Well, hmm. Bigger circles. Maybe I'll put something in the middle of them. Maybe I won't. It's getting a little hard to hold on to because I'm right at the bitter edge. Okay, there. I hope you can see that. Now, this acrylic is pretty dry. So I may go ahead. Well, I just felt a little stickiness. Oh, that's okay. I'm using acrylic with acrylic. So we've got this, and it's kind of a shimmery, greeny thing, and it's on blue. Maybe I'll just grab this white. And this one, I, for some reason, this particular white pen does not like to post one on top of the other. And just go around. And maybe around... Let me just give it a punch. There we go. Every other. It's still a little wet. But again, I'm just using acrylic with acrylic, so I'm not hurting anything. But I, with this new layer, I could not do alcohol on top. But I can certainly do the acrylic with acrylic. Oh, I guess I lost the pattern there. So I'll just go back to this. Another row. It's dragging into the paint. But I'm not hurting the marker, I promise you. Okay. That looks good. That's about half of those. Okay. And then I think with these guys, I'm just going to add some random purple lines here and there not all over kind of like some fabrics can be you know Oh, maybe here. There. Just random. Okay. I'm going to set this aside to dry. And now I'm going to just show you. This is the kind of ephemera. See how low this is? And this doesn't even belong in there. But this is the kind of thing I do. Now I'll take and I'll cut out with a... Uh, these, these are done with a punch. 
and I use these. If you've seen other of my videos, you may have seen it. That's one thing I do, which I still have a, a good amount here, leaves. I'm almost out of leaves and flowers. I am just about out of flowers. Here's another flower. And I think I, did I see like, yeah, like I've got some heart shapes and that doesn't belong in there. And I've got, you know, other, other geometric kind of shapes, but this is what I do with those. But the hearts, the flowers, the leaves, that I'm really low on. Here's another flower. So that's what we're going to work on. You ready? Have you, have, have you hung on to your hat? Okay. So let's see. I'm bringing up this first one that we worked on together. Because although the acrylics, they're, they're pretty dog pretty doggone dry. I'm going to go ahead and risk a Sharpie and I'm going to see about making some, some designs on here and I'll just show you what I mean. So I'm going to start out with some hearts and sometimes I like to do hearts with a black outline and sometimes I like to use hearts with a white outline. So I'll, I'll do a little of both. But hearts is something that I find handy to have in my little stash of ephemera. Like that. Now I'll grab the white and I'll do some in white as well. And then it just depends. Let me get it started here. It does depend on what I'm using it on. This is a finer white, <clears throat> pardon me. This white is finer. So I'm having to kind of, I've got this white, but it feels like it's almost gone. And I haven't found yet a place that I can just buy a, a single Pasca. This weight of line is much more like I would like to have. There we go. So there's some hearts and those would get fussy cut. Now, how about some flowers? I'm gonna start out with a yellow Pasca. And these feel pretty dry. I'm gonna start out by making a rough circle and then a rough oval. Those two might be even a little close together, but we'll make it work. And then I'm going to take black Sharpie. Like that. And then this one. More elongated, like that. And might add, you know, a little more detail. Just like some little petal folds. And then maybe I'll take the brown and just go around the edge of the center. There, that'll be two cute flowers. Now I'm gonna, I'm always tempted to make bigger, but it seems like the bigger ones are the ones I have more left over and the smaller ones are the ones that go quicker. Maybe it's because I'm using them more on artist trading cards and bookmarks and things like that, but I do use them in my art journal and I have used them on canvases. I also use them to do things like decorate envelopes on the outside. Um, I don't, 
I'm not what I would consider a greeting card maker, but if I need a greeting card, then I will make it myself. But I don't just make, you know, mass produce bunches and bunches of greeting cards. I guess the only exception to that would be Christmas. I am seeing that there's uh, different levels of light coming through, and that's because it's getting to be afternoon. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going to make just a little bit more on here, but we're just about done. So I'm not going to get up and I'm not going to close the window just yet. Okay, I'm going to take my Pasca and I'm going to start out by making some circles around the circles. Just like that. Okay. Maybe I should be making some more flowers. It's what I need, and I think it's kind of what um, people want to see. I'm going to use the heavier white. I'm going to grab the yellow again. Maybe I'll grab orange. And I'll make one more, two more, two more. Okay. I'll make them a little bit smaller. And then... like that with the white. It all will show up better. It won't be so confusing looking when they're cut out. So if that's on your mind, just know in your heart that when you cut these out, they will stand more on their own. But right now they're just so mixed up in all these patterns. But honestly, you won't be disappointed that you have so many patterns going on. I'm just outlining that circle with the brown. And there's two more little flowers. Okay, so you can see how I make these flowers. Can I shade this? <laughs> there. You can see how I've made these, these uh, flowers. And they're going to be fussy cut. And they're going to turn into ephemera. So this is how I use up old paint and make my ephemera on magazine sheets. All right. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you found it educational. Please consider liking the video if you liked it. Subscribing to my channel. I need it so much. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.